Hey, what's happening now, YouTube? Everybody, forgive me once again for my haircut. I'm going tomorrow. Going tomorrow to get tightened up because I got to go out of town next week and travel on some business. So, but anyway, let's get back to the finishing, uh, finishing up this fun, small projects that can generate and make you a lot of money. And I come down uh, just about finished up with the final pieces. The only thing left to do is to contact submit the interior lining on uh, on this watch band cuff and to go ahead and stitch it up. So I'm not going to bore you guys with watching those contact cement dry and watching me set, uh, stitch this up with the saddle stitching and all of that. So, but I am going to angle the camera down and go ahead and put everything together and mark it up and then you guys will know exactly what is taking place with the watch band cuff up until this point. I think that you guys are further enough along to where uh, we can skip right over the gluing and the sewing part. All right, so here we go. Let me angle this down and let you guys see what we're working with. All right, and the color turned out beautiful, man. I am really feeling this Ranger tan in the Echo Flow brand. Uh, let me get it around to the English parts of this. This is the uh, stain, the Ranger stain in Echo Flow or EcoFlow. This is a Tandy product here and I'm really loving the way that this tan, that Ranger tan turned out on the cuff. Man, it turned out way better than what I thought it was, what I thought it would. And it's, a, it's, it's the right tone from just the regular Phoebings or Fibings tan. So I really like this and really it's making me want to switch all the way over and start using the, the EcoFlow uh, stain. Man, I'm really liking that. And the great part about this is it's water-based, so you can tone it down even more by just adding a little water to that. But anyway, that's the color that we use, the Ranger Tan and the EcoFlow. Um, well, it says leather dye. It doesn't say stain, but this is the EcoFlow um, uh, uh, color that we use. Ranger tan, leather dye. Man, I'm really liking that. Really liking that. Okay, so let's put this thing together. And I'm going to go with the white face. Simply because the other one was red. And I don't think that red thread will match up with this very well. So, uh, and then the other watch, because I have three. Remember I told you guys that you can get these right off of the Wish app. Right off of the Wish app at a dollar each and you can choose different colors. Now the one that I have on my band here that I made, this is also a Wish App watch and it's the black face. Uh, but anyway, just to switch the game up a little bit because I think that white wax thread is gonna really make this pop and draw attention to the detailing and the carving work or into the stamping work. Okay, so we're gonna put those to the side and I'm going to have to remove the pins from this one here, which is not going to take very long. We're just going to pop these pins out and use these pins on the white one. And we're going to keep right on rocking and rolling with this one. All right. So just going to insert these pins in real quick. And then we're going to put these, put this together so you guys can actually see how, um, that you can. I mean, and this was a fun little project. A fun little quick project, very inexpensive, put together with, ah, now I can't find the hole. Uh, let me pause this video real quick because I don't want to take a whole bunch of time on trying to find the pinhole for this watch band. So I'm going to pause it real quick like, I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. Man, if I knew it was going to take that long, I probably would have just stuck to it. But anyway... Um, I would suggest that you guys go ahead and round your edges off with your edge slicker or if, if I, now first knowing that I'm going to put a back piece on this I'm going to wait to round the edges off but I did take my English rounder and round the top corners off and we did I did go ahead and scab the back side so when I do put those pieces together it's going to turn out great and as well as I went ahead and top coated this here because it's basically finished at this point so all i'm going to do now uh is go ahead and thread my 
thread up the straps and get the straps set to where I want them to be. And go ahead and push these through my slots here. And I'm just going to match up the holes where my rivets are going to go right there because I want this to lock in place on both sides. So we're just going to go ahead and slide these in. And you guys can see just how this is going to take shape. And it's already been centered, checked, and double checked. Now, here's another part here. I didn't bring these straps. I didn't bring the straps all the way to the ends because I want that part to be hidden. I didn't want it to show up in the end part to where you'll see, you're already gonna, uh, it has just been extra work to get that to cover up and burnish very well. So let me go ahead and get my rivets and get these set. I'm gonna set the first uh, top two right here closest to the watch band. And let me find another cap here. And I'm gonna turn this a little bit because I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, putting this together for you guys. Nothing extravagant, nothing, nothing really extravagant here. Let me find my rivet setter. I'm gonna go ahead and set these. Actually, let me go ahead and put this secondary rivet in. I'm gonna tap this down. I'm gonna go ahead and tap this down. Not hard all the way or not complete, but just enough to hold it so I can, I can slide this if I need to move it on the other side. So let me go ahead and push that rivet through and make sure that this is going to be enough give when the watch is wrapped around the wrist. That's what I'm checking for. I wanna make sure that it's not too far to one side of the slot and not too far to the other side of the slot. I wanna make sure that it stays centered on this. So again, just a light tap, not to get it to set, but to where I can work with it and move it. And you can see that that's going to wrap good, very well. It's gonna wrap, wrap very well. Okay, now we can go ahead and tighten this on up. Just want to make sure that sets and this is the part that what we wanted what I wanted to cover I didn't want this part to be exposed to the wrist so that's why we're going to put that interior lining on that so let's go ahead and finish setting up all of these push that on through man I am really liking that color you guys just don't know now that's done and I'm looking for one more. There it is. There's the other rivet there. Now, this is the part that right when we get to the um, buckle attachment, I'm going to go ahead and run my buckle through here. Now, this is the part that I'm going to stitch as well. I'm not going to run my rivet through there. I'm just going to stitch the sides of this. So, but I'm going to go ahead and set my, uh, put a little bit of contact cement on this fold, uh, right here where the, the buckle is. And now the great, the, here's the thing also that I didn't tell you guys about the keeper, the strap keeper. I already have one that's already pre-cut and it has been moistened or wet and it is out of pocket somewhere. Okay, I'm gonna have to come back to that part too as well. Um, but that's the only thing that's left. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to mount my, my, uh, keeper right here behind the rivet, uh, closest to the buckle. So as this is being threaded through, now I'm not going to set this last rivet because I want to be able to stitch this. I want to stitch this all the way through. Then I'm going to set that last rivet there. And then the only thing that's left after that point, ladies and gentlemen, is to go ahead and push the rivet through, set the rivet, and then have this side glued and ready, and then everything else. I got enough room right here to burnish this end. I got enough room to burnish this end. And once I um, uh, set the rivet here, I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and push this rivet through. And then, but not put the cap on. 
I wouldn't suggest that. I would suggest just go ahead and push the rivet through, set your back piece or your interior lining piece. I'm gonna put a little glue on that too to make sure that doesn't flap back up because this one has two rivets on this end. So this rivet really right here is just for decoration to match the opposite side. But I think this is going to work very, very well. Very, very well. But I think you get the gist, the gist of how that's going to match up and round out and work. Nice watch band cuff. Uh, let me get this set up because I want you guys to see just how this is going to look. Just, I think that's going to be a nice piece of work. Now, if I was to do sell this, uh, which I think I'm just going to use this as one of my template pieces, but if I was to sell this, I would suggest that you guys start, start just for the craftsmanship and the leather work and the process of putting it together. I wouldn't sell this cuff for anything less than $65, even if it is an off-brand watch. Because guess what? All you have to do is take your nice little um, X-Acto knife or use one of your utility knife blades. You can pop this out, pull the face off. As long as this watch is a five millimeter, five millimeters uh, as far as the pen work, you can replace this or the customer or the client can replace this with any watch. Even if you just want to do these as a display, just to show them when you take your pictures, you can show them what it will look like. And then if the person wanted to just buy the band itself, then, <clears throat> hey, you know, then you can tell sell the band for around, I would say anywhere from 50 to 55, maybe to $60, depending on how much craftsmanship and work you put into this. But there it is, ladies and gentlemen, there it is, the watch band cuff in ranger tan complete the only thing that's left to do is put the back side on there and to stitch this with the uh the wax thread now you can even go a step further if you want to and go ahead and punch through this end of the band on both sides and then that way you can have your wax thread running up through here as well as on this side too. It's not going to hurt anything. I would just that you I would suggest that you would just stitch all of that before you put the backside plate on to hide and mask all of this. But there it is. The watch band cuff in Ranger Tan and the Echo Flow leather die. All right, I'm going to sign off and get back to work and finish this thing up. Ooh. Lord, I'm moistening. I'm moistening. <laughs> but anyway, hey, thank you guys for chilling with me these 12 minutes. As always, I'll be right back because the next video we're going to do with small projects that can make you a lot of money is up next uh, is the leather coasters. And that's custom design and leather coasters. And you can sell those in three different sets. A set of four, a set of eight, six, eight, and it's not that many people that got that have more than eight cups, you know, or have more than eight people, unless you're just one of these big party guys. But then your, your client or the customer who is requesting to get those coasters, you can always just up the price on whatever. But uh, I would suggest you stick with a set of four, a set of eight, set of six, set of eight and maybe a set of 12. Anything more than that, hey, I mean, that's that's just extra gravy on the biscuit if you ask me. So, but you guys come on back. Don't forget to hit the subscription button right below this video and also hit the little bell and that will give it, send you a notification every time I do these little uh, videos and just keep coming back. I appreciate you guys for your support. I thank you guys for subscribing and tuning in. This is the Leather Cowboy right here at Premier Leather Crafters in the Dirty South. I'll see you guys on the other side. Keep crafting.